So guys, very good evening. So this is Rasul, Faculty of History. As far as myself is concerned, my name is Syed Rasul. Done Masters in History from Pondicherry Central University and prepared for competitive exams, especially civil services. I, I couldn't do that. Thereby, I have entered in teaching field in 2011. And since 2011, I've been in teaching field and teaching for like you know, various competitive exams. Right? It's all about your history, sir. As far as history is concerned, like, you know, we are going to understand what are the components in history, how we need to understand these components, especially from exam point of view. We are not going to discuss history from academic point of view. Right? How many of you are non-history students? Non-social, non-social sciences, non-social sciences, right? Fine. How many of you history students? One, two, three, four. Ah, uh, fine. Good. Achha, even online students also started raising their hands, right? Uh, fine. So when it comes to history students, right? You might have studied in academics very deep of particular subject, particular like you know component. It is not in the case of competitive history. No doubt, content is the same. Right? But how we are going to use this content, it differs. Right? In history, we have three components, medieval and modern. So we call it ancient Indian history, medieval Indian history and modern Indian history. So generally, questions from aspirants, we were told by our seniors, we were told by our like you know colleagues and all out of three components out of three components modern indian history is very important extremely important kind of like, like we generally get some sort of suggestions because history is a vast subject why the hell we shall read all components right let us go through only one component with smart work and all so we'll get through prelims kind of right? and let me tell you this strategy never work out, never works out in competitive exams. What does it mean? Which means we shall read all components. And no doubt, a little bit emphasis will be on modern Indian history. Without the background of ancient Indian history and medieval Indian history, it doesn't many, it doesn't make any sense understanding modern Indian history. So we must have the background of ancient and medieval. No doubt, we shall emphasize over modern then when it comes to ancient and medieval what kind of events we shall concentrate obviously not political history please. not political history so when i say not political history say some ex-ruler titles battles he had these many wives these many children dozens and dozens of it. no we are not here to talk about like you know dynastic politics right? We are going to discuss political history, what is what kind of. Because when you understand political history, then only you are going to have clarity over society, followed by economy, followed by culture. So our target is, our target is to know socio-economic and cultural aspects of ancient and medieval history. In order to understand these three components, we shall have the glance of political history. What is what kind of? Because history taught us politics determine social institutions, politics determine economic institutions, and politics determined even cultural institutions. For example, to make you understand, we'll be going to discuss Jainism, right? Jainism, we call it, followed by Buddhism. Right? Without the support of politics, without the support of state, forget about Jainism and Buddhism. For example, to make you understand, Mauryan rulers patronized Jainism, Buddhism. Best example, Chandra Gupta Maurya was a Jain. Best example, his grandson, that is Mauryan Ashoka, was a Buddhist. Without Chandragupta Maurya, forget about propagation of Jainism to where? To South India. And it was the gentleman Maurin Ashoka who made Buddhism not only famous religion but also world class religion. When I say world class religion, he 
propagated Buddhism to Sri Lanka, to Southeast Asian countries and other countries. And it is not exaggerated to say, it was the same gentleman who made his family members to involve in propagation. So my point is, if any religion, religion comes under cultural institution, right? if any religion, if, a, if any faith, if any cultural institution to be survived, it must have the support of, it must have the support of state, 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 government, like, you know, king, whatever you have, like, technical terms. Apply the same towards Hinduism. Right? We'll be going to discuss, right, Hinduism. So what does that mean by Hinduism? In which circumstances Hinduism got formulated? And especially Guptan period, right? Guptan Empire. It was in Guptan Empire, like, you know, various institutions merged with a particular, like, you know, component. We call this component as Hindu religion. How Mauryans embraced Jainism, Mauryan rulers, like, you know, professed Buddhism, Mauryan rulers professed other philosophies and other religions propagated these cultures up to the same towards Guptan rulers. Guptan rulers also professed Hinduism, patronized Hinduism and propagated Hinduism. So what does it mean by like, you know, patronized? Very simple. Hindu scholars were patronized by Guptan rulers. We have Kali Dasa, Varaha Mihira, Arya Bhatta, different like you know, scholars. And obviously, they did write various books on different subjects. And it was Guptan rulers who don donated lands to the temples. Guptan rulers constructed various temples in a typical style called, temple style called Nagara style. Nagara style. So when you observe the previous question, so now the previous questions of general studies mains, a couple of days ago, general studies mains exam got over, GS1, very simple question explained the cultural contributions of ancient India, right? We'll be going to discuss, right? Cultural contributions, I'm talking about general studies mains, please. Cultural contributions are nothing but we have art forms, right? architectural forms. First, let me complete this, like, you know, my point is, without political history, it doesn't make any sense to understand socio-economic and cultural history. So, as I was telling, Guptans patronized, Guptans propagated Hindu institutions. When I say Guptans patronized Hindu institutions, they, they built many temples in Nagara style of architecture. We'll be going to discuss in subsequent classes, that is, we have three types of three types of temple architecture that is nagara style north india vesara style deccan and and dravidian style in so what were the differences different features the characteristic features between nagara vesara and dravida that will be discussed obviously with the background of a little bit political history so one of the components of ancient and medieval society, social institutions of ancient India and medieval India. As far as, as far as society is concerned, we shall understand how societies got classified. Our target is ancient and medieval. What are the areas to be concentrated as far like, you know, competitive exams are concerned. Having the background of political history, understanding social institutions. So when I say society, in society we have like, you know, we need to understand every society with two components. One is social stratification, stratification, like you know, classification you call it. Every society got classified on the basis of something, please. maybe few societies on the basis of caste, the best example, Hindu society, we have Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras. Caste was a base for Hindu society. When it comes to Islam, race was a base. We'll be going to discuss. Turkish race, Afghan race, Sheikh Zadas and Habshis. And if you go to European societies where you come across, class was the criteria. Rich and poor. Class. Rich classes. 
poor classes. And if you go to like, you know, American societies, where you come across, color is, color is the criteria. Whites and blacks. If you go to tribal societies, ethnicity was a basis, right? So on some, on some base, societies do classify. So we'll be going to discuss like, you know, say for example, Indus Valley Society, what was a, what was a criteria for Indus Valley Society? Followed by Vedic society, early Vedic period, later Vedic period. What was the criteria for these societies? Followed by Mauryans, like you know, post Mauryans, it went on. And obviously, the second component that is position of women. Position of women. You can't imagine a society without discussion of women. How women treated by particular society, particular people. Say so for example, to make you understand, what was, an, what was an attitude of Indus Valley men towards women? Did women of Indus Valley civilization give equal respect? Did men of Indus Valley civilization treat their women with all sorts of like, you know, equal priorities or egalitarian priorities? We'll be going to discuss Vedic civilization otherwise called as Aryan civilization. How the position of women got changed from Indus Valley society to Vedic society. When I say Indus Valley society patriarchal in nature and obviously Vedic civilization was also patriarchal in nature. What does it mean by patriarchal? Including online students, what does it mean by patriarchal? Good. Someone says male dominated. Good. Male dominated. So, patriarchal family are patriarchal society. Patriarchal. Patri, Latin term, the English version, men. Matri, Latin term, the English version, Pitru Swami Vivasa and Tamtirulu. Matru Swami Vivasa. Patriarchal society. Patriarchal family. So, patriarchal family is where the head of family member happened to be senior male member. Simple. Right? Senior male member. When I say senior male member, maybe grandfather, maybe father, maybe elder brother. Patriarchal system, patriarchal family, patriarchal society. And let me tell you, right from the days of Indus Valley Civilization, even today, in fact, Indus Valley Civilization, according to an opinion, Sarjan Marshall opines that it was not patriarchal, but it was a matriarchal that will be discussed right so you better understand this way right from vedic civilization even in 21st century india indian society is dominated by men it's nothing but patriarchal and don't say my intlo ma mummy boss ive vodu ani cheppedu anmaru me intlo mi mummy boss undochu i'm talking about general please ma mummy em chepte ma dad ed intadu sir adi that that that's another story so i'm talking about general general picture of society. It's a basically patriarchal society. So, in patriarchal society, generally, women were given socially subordinate position. Generally, please. Obviously, in matriarchal society, men will be given, men will be given socially subordinate position. Especially, we have, we have, patri we have matriarchal society in India. In one community, even today, the community follows matriarchal society. Can anyone? Fantastic. Nayards, Kerala. Nayards. Nayards follow matriarchal society. No, keep us at tribals. I'm talking about like you know mainland societies. Akara Pelli is kunte. Ammai Radhan Mat. It is the bound yes, sir. Huh? Kontaman Namala Klan could huh? Manam would implement them. Atlangan. Minanta Salavan. Right. So here, position of women, how, how women treated by men, please. In Indus Valley, followed by Vedic civilization. And no doubt, patriarchal society, women generally be given socially subordination. What, with what kind of, with what kind of, like, you know, treatment. So when I say socially subordination, the remaining, remaining, like, you know, elements, they were given education. I'm talking about Vedic civilization. They were given education. They were given property rights. They were given like, you know, 
ఫ్రీడమ్ టు సెలెక్ట్ హస్బెండ్స్ ప్లేస్ సంస్కృతిలో ముద్దుగా స్వయంవరం అంటాం మాకు తెలుసులే సార్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ రైట్ స్వయంవరం అంటున్నారు ఈవెన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ ఎగ్జాగ్రేట్ సే విమెన్ వర్ ఆల్సో గివెన్ టు హ్యావ్ మోర్ దాన్ వన్ హస్బెండ్ ప్లేస్ పాలియాండ్రీ వీ కాల్ ఇట్ పాలియాండ్రీ especially in early vedic period not not in later vedic period and obviously not now please palla palla vikthra jethe sir mala veellu cheyachha sir barabar chestaru reason being patriarchal society patriarchal society obviously evadi script ki alle hero anmadu adi amalakala paper lo ichinte additional iskomal rashavul anmadu it's a it's a very common human psychology keeping aside my point is in early vedic period women were given respectable position besides respectable position they were also given they were also given equal opportunities on par with so when i say polyandry found in early vedic society and need not to tell you even polygamy also found in early vedic period and from later vedic period onwards unfortunately we found forget about forget about polyandry and we found domination of men over women this is what actual patriarchal society so from later vedic period onwards even today the same sort of domination is being continued in in general indian society in particular hindu society when i say indian society it includes all societies you call hindu society you call muslim society you call christian society i'm talking about in general then why we are emphasizing hindu society because it has come from hindu society earlier like you know we used to call vedic societies and all obviously for which we shall understand the background of political history besides we have economic institutions our target is socio economic and cultural history when it comes to ancient and medieval even when you go through previous question papers maximum questions will be on social institutions maximum questions will be on cultural institutions obviously with related to economic institutions especially of ancient and medieval as i was telling out of three components out of three components when you concentrate only on modern indian history the best example last year prelims exam based out of 22 questions we found three questions from modern indian history out of 22 questions of modern i'm sorry indian history we found only three questions from modern keep aside upsc a uh, recently like you know, a couple of months ago in telangana state we found si exam please if i'm not wrong you might have written please one or two right and then sir civil service was the si and jepto anni rayalu tappaledu anni rayalu what for to know what is pattern like what were to understand to understand to understand our capacity in ikkane em cheyatlemu akkadi kelli em chestam kind of so nothing is wrong start applying whatever like you know notification comes right so as i was telling in si exam we found 22 questions from history and out of 22 questions maximum from medieval and modern and even in police constable 32 questions from history and it's quite interesting to know same same share was given to ancient medieval and modern so my point is we have many myths regarding history that is we shall ignore or we shall give less importance to ancient and medieval let us give much importance to modern please for god's sake don't like you know follow these strategies you shall give equal importance to all components reason being reason being we found in syllabus that is history of india which means right from ancient to modern not only history please for all subjects i'm not advising you people like you know to get command over each and every concept of ancient medieval and modern what is what and a question vaste adi mellaga answer chese vidhanga undal mat enough please because because we are we are generalists please our exam is general in nature that is the reason the, the respective public com- respective public service commissions they use the term called general studies 
they call upsc general studies prelims general studies mains group 1 prelims and group 1 mains after the same towards like you know even other lower exams we have group 2 we have si and other exams so general studies what does it mean by general studies general studies is nothing but knowing knowing something of everything something of history something of economy something of polity something of geography what not please we have the other components right what is what kind of then how about academics academics knowing knowing everything of something please knowing everything of something when i say knowing everything of something so for example like you know if you have if you are doing like you know masters in history you must do only in history please. and that to only one topic maybe 1857 revolt maybe women movements maybe peasant movements maybe tribal revolts maybe national movement and that to only gandhian movements and that to only civil disobedience movement and that to only non cooperation movement that is only one topic we are not academicians we are generalists so something of history what is what kind of very broadly right and your your preparation must be comprehensive in nature that is for prelims followed by mains followed by even personality test interview call it if you are reading one concept you shall keep in mind how the concept is useful for prelims for example you may understand take temple architecture please temple architecture we have three styles in temple architecture as i was telling nagara in north india followed by vesara in deccan followed by dravida in in south india please north nagara deccan vesara and south that is dravida so reading like you know temple architecture like it's one component very small component how temple architecture important for prelims point of view right? obviously some sort of features you call them so how we shall understand like you know features of temple architecture how the questions we can understand very simple when you go through previous question papers right? when you go through previous question papers you can understand the pulse of respective public service commissions right from upsc to appsc tspsc please how the questions have been asked and what were the areas to be concentrated as simple as it is you are not here to prepare right from page 1 to last page please prelims how the same components can be can be organized in mains point of time whatever content you have learned for prelims when you put into script it becomes descriptive that's it please if the question asks in mains how we can answer you may be you may be asked gentlemen what is the difference between nagara style of architecture and dravidian style of architecture you need not to give a lengthy lecture please i'm talking about in interview right you must in a position to explain so this is difference between nagara style of north india and dravidian style of south india so i prefer to call this preparation as comprehensive preparation i'm just giving one example for each and every component each and every concept you shall understand concept for three perspectives prelims mains and interview not only for history let me tell you for all subjects oka concept ni chadutunnaru ante ee three elements meeku tirutunnal anamata mind prelims ila jadavali right mains ki koncham enlarge cheyali oka vela adugute ila answer cheppali enough please once again i repeat you need not to do phd in all these subjects right what is what kind of so fine so as i was telling then how about economy right so when it comes to economy we have three components in economy right three components in economy that is agriculture one of the components agriculture followed by industries and finally trade and commerce how society how society consisted of two components that is social stratification otherwise called as classification of society 
second component what kind of position women were given in respective societies after the same towards economy three components first component agriculture followed by industries you also call them handy crafts cheti vrutulu antam telugulo kutira parishram different technical terms we have and finally trade and commerce when it comes to trade and commerce we have two components that is internal trade and external trade as far as agriculture is concerned what kind of methods used by ancient indians what for in order to cultivate various crops you come across some exquisite methods maybe maybe like you know slash and burn cultivation otherwise called as otherwise called as fantastic shifting cultivation otherwise called as zoom cultivation kada em avutundante prathi concept ni demarcate chesko nadavalanu obviously e organized method edetundo will be going to get in classes so the main motto of attending classes with so many sacrifices obviously manaku chaala important meetings ha unna kuda atanni pakkan petti vachi ida goosoni edaitha cheptunnaro vini raayadam it's not a joke list it's it's nothing but like you know sacrifice obviously your sacrifices will be rewarded right definitely ha right so the main motto of attending classes to know what to read what not to read so when you get command over when you understand what to read what not to read let me tell you 50% of your preparation got over the remaining 50% just take syllabus followed by previous year question papers followed by reference books that's it please syllabus what for what is their syllabus unless you know the syllabus you can't read please so getting command over syllabus followed by previous year question papers how the questions were asked how our preparation must be what are the strategies to be adopted to read particular like you know reference books so when you go through previous question papers let me tell you you did not to get any guidance from xyz people right maybe like on repeaters maybe from lecturers maybe from like you know the coaching institutes you yourself in a position to understand this is how we need to right because we are not kids please we are grown up we have maturity by going previous question papers we can easily understand we can have our own preparation strategies obviously every aspirant is every aspirant has its own uniqueness i'm talking about in studying ఒక నైట్ మొత్తం చదువుతారు ఉద్యోగాలు మొత్తం ఆడతారు అన్నారు ఒక్కొక్కరికి ఒక్కొక్క స్ట్రాటజీస్ ఉంటాయి సో జస్ట్ లైక్ యు నో ఫాలో యువర్ ఓన్ స్ట్రాటజీస్ అండ్ ఆబ్వియస్లీ విత్ రెఫరెన్స్ బుక్స్ నా క్వశ్చన్ ఈజ్ వి హ్యావ్ హండ్రెడ్స్ అండ్ హండ్రెడ్స్ ఆఫ్ బుక్స్ అండ్ ఈచ్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీ సబ్జెక్ట్ వాట్ ఆర్ ది రెఫరెన్స్ బుక్స్ వన్స్ అగైన్ ద క్రెడిట్ గోస్ టు యూపీఎస్సి యూపీఎస్సి యూనియన్ పబ్లిక్ సర్వీస్ కమిషన్ సెస్ దీస్ ఆల్ ది రెఫరెన్స్ బుక్స్ వెన్ ఇట్ కమ్స్ టు హిస్టరీ యూ సపోజ్ టు రీడ్ old ncrts that is ancient india by r s sharma will be going to discuss why only old ncrts why can't new ncrts will be going to discuss ancient india by r s sharma medieval india by satish chandra and modern india by bipin chandra so these are the like you know, extremely important books as far as competitive exams history is comes so once you get through three what these three books then go for standard books what are the standard books that will be discussed so first syllabus previous year question papers reference books whatever exam you prepare for you are preparing for civil services syllabus of civil services you are preparing for group 1 services syllabus of group 1 services if you belong to tspsc if you belong to appnc same previous question papers and reference books so try to catch try to catch the pulse of respective public service commissions so when it comes to like you know economy one of the methods what kind of like you know methods used by ancient 
people and followed by medieval people obviously in terms of agriculture and what kind of irrigational methods when it comes to irrigational methods we have we have like you know well irrigation we have canal irrigation we have tank irrigation what not you come across some xyz methods obviously we shall understand the general content of irrigational methods and we shall keep in mind technical terms for example to make you understand ara ghatta please ever nin dittatledu it's a name of the it's a name of the irrigational device persian term ara ghatta you might have watched a movie called bahubali please how many of you watched a movie called bahubali almost everyone right bahubali movie you know andar watch nara inga watch ledu andar watch intro right ha sir తెలుగు నేల మీద ఇవన్నీ పెద్ద పెద్ద డెలాగ్ వద్దు తెలుగు నేల మీద బాహుబలి ఇవన్నీ వద్దు అనమాట సో ఎవరి వన్ మైట్ హ్యావ్ వాస్ట్ అ మూవీ కాల్డ్ బాహుబలి సో ఇన్ బాహుబలి దిస్ ఎ సీన్ ఎస్పెషల్లీ పెద్ద బాహుబలి ప్లేస్ పెద్ద బాహుబలి ఆయన పేరేం పేరు ఉంటుంది ఇది గుర్తుంటుంది ఆన్సర్ అడుగుతూ అట్లే కానీ రైట్ సో పెద్ద బాహుబలి గెట్స్ సినిమా కష్టాలు నన్ను అది సినిమా కాదు సార్ సినిమాలోనే సినిమా కష్టాలు ఉంటాయి అనమాట సో వాళ్ళ మమ్మీ రెండు ఆప్షన్స్ ఇస్తుంది పాప కావాలన్నా రాజ్యం కావాలంటే నాకు పాపనే కావాలంటాడు అంటే అయితే గెట్ అవుట్ ఫ్రమ్ అని చెప్తుంది అనమాట సో దిస్ బాబు కమ్స్ అవుట్ ఫ్రమ్ మహేష్ మధ్య సో అక్కడ కొన్ని సెంటిమెంటల్ ఎలా విసుంటాయి అన్నీ తెలుసు అనమాట ఎందుకు ఇవన్నీ ఉంటాయి బట్ రైట్ సో దిస్ బాబు బై లుకింగ్ ఎట్ లైక్ యూనో కామన్ పీపుల్ హూ ఆర్ సఫరింగ్ టు గెట్ వాటర్ అండ్ ఆల్ రైట్ హీ మేక్స్ అ డివైస్ అంటే బాబులో ఉన్న ఒక ఇంజనీర్ బయటకు వస్తాడు అనమాట సార్ సినిమాని సినిమా మాత్రం చూడలేదు సార్ నేను కూడా సినిమాని సినిమా మాత్రం చూస్తున్నాడు రైట్ సో దిస్ బాబు ప్రిపేర్స్ అ డివైస్ త్రూ విచ్ వాటర్ కమ్స్ ఫ్రమ్ వెల్ ప్లీజ్ యాడ్ బైట్ కొడితే నీళ్ళు పైనకు వస్తాయి అనమాట మనం కొడితే తల మీద పడుతుంది రైట్ సో దట్ డివైస్ ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ అరా ఘట్ట ప్లీజ్ అంటే ఇది ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ చేయడానికి సో కాల్ కాటన్ బిజినెస్ అనమాట సో హియర్ ఇన్ వన్ ఇంటర్వ్యూ Rajamouli made it clear that this particular device we have learned from medieval history. Araghatta is a Persian technical term, the English version, English version, leather bucket we call it. Bucket made of leather, leather bucket. So getting water from wells to top. So giving water to the fields, agricultural fields I'm talking about. And even we have Rabhat, another Persian term is Rabhat. once again like you know you generally watch movies right movies lo appudappudu konni songs vastayi but you can't imagine telugu movies especially without songs and fights please ante right? moodu moodu fight lo aaru aaru paatalu obviously andlo koncham amma telisle sir ah koncham oka paata compulsory undal anamata lekapothe fans hurt avutaru evudu calculations alakal anamata so ee movie ante ee songs lo background when we observe కొన్ని వీల్స్ తిరుగుతూ ఉంటాయి అనమాట వీల్స్ తిరుగుతూ ఉంటాయి అనమాట ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ అత్తారింటికి దారిన సినిమా ఉందనమాట సో అత్తారింటికి దారిన సినిమాలో ఒక సాంగ్లో వీల్ తిరుగుతుంటుంది అనమాట సో లైక్ యూనో వెన్ ఇట్ కమ్స్ ద టాప్ ఆఫ్ ది ద బకెట్ ఇట్ కమ్స్ టు ది బాటమ్ అండ్ ఇట్ గెట్స్ వాటర్ అండ్ ఇట్ సెండ్స్ టు ద ఫీల్డ్స్ ద డివైస్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ యాజ్ రాభత్ ది పాయింట్ ఈజ్ Besides general content, we shall understand these terms, please. Technical terms. Reason being previous question. Reason being previous questions. So when you asked general content, everyone knows, please. Allah Pala Vikta Ramadu. UPSC, Itlant Uddhan Jepto. Nukon Jepto. Technical terms. Mana Pera Mana Ke Gurtu Nudu. Forget about technical terms. So we must concentrate on technical terms. When it comes to ancient India, when it comes to ancient india we have technical terms especially we are going to learn that is sanskrit terms followed by pali terms followed by prakrit terms i am talking about technical terms right? obviously when it comes to medieval indian history we have persian terms persian terms a little bit arabic terms sir ivanni nechukune samayamlo mana kalpulo dipthadi chala chala biological changes kuda aithe anamata సో ఆబ్వియస్లీ కుచ్చు పానికి వెళ్ళి బహుత్ కుచ్చు కోన కుచ్చు కాదు అనమాట అది కుచ్చు అనేది అయిపోయింది అకాడమిక్స్ లేదు అనమాట ఇక్కడ బహుత్ కుచ్చు కోనా పడతాయి 
ఒక్కోసారి అనిపిస్తుంది అనమాట ఎందుకు వచ్చాము నేను మళ్ళీ కొంచెం నీళ్ళు తాగితే మళ్ళీ చల్లబడుతుంది సో మీ పాయింట్ ఈజ్ వెన్ యూ మేడ్ అ డెసిషన్ వెన్ యూ మేడ్ అ డెసిషన్ మేడ్ దట్ సేఫ్ యూ వెన్ యూ హ్యావ్ మేడ్ అ డెసిషన్ ఆబ్వియస్లీ వి షెల్ వర్క్ హార్డ్ నాట్ ఫర్ సమ్ వన్స్ బట్ ఫర్ అవర్ సెల్స్ వేరే వాళ్ళు ఎవరైనా అడుగుతారేమో అది కాదనమాట ఫస్ట్ లైక్ నో వి షెల్ హ్యావ్ క్వెస్ట్ ఫర్ నాలెడ్జ్ దట్ మెయింటైన్ దట్ వి షెల్ హ్యావ్ క్వెస్ట్ ఫర్ నాలెడ్జ్ అంటే తెలుసుకోవాలని ఒక తపన ఉండాలన్నమాట అండ్ వన్ మోర్ థింగ్ యాస్పిరెంట్స్ షెల్ కీప్ ఇన్ మైండ్ అబ్జర్వేషన్ సోషల్ అబ్జర్వేషన్ ఎకానమిక్ అబ్జర్వేషన్ కల్చరల్ అబ్జర్వేషన్ అండ్ ఆబ్వియస్లీ వీ డూ న్యూ వీ డూ రీడ్ న్యూస్ పేపర్స్ పొలిటికల్ అబ్జర్వేషన్ ఎలా ఉంటుంది అనమాట so what does it mean by social observation if you are witnessed your family members if you are witnessed like you know some social institution you try to understand like you know why the social institution or if you are like you know in got involved in particular cultural event or particular like you know festival you call it try to understand what is the significance of this this particular like you know festival recently everyone has celebrated ganesh festival right i know chadu malle this kala ikkada vetcha adi vere vishayam untu so what is this right why we shall celebrate these festivals what is the significance of these festivals i am not advising you people to know religiously please i am talking about with a little bit common sense right for example we are going to celebrate dasara please and especially in telangana we have batukamma festival so why this festival why this festival is being celebrated so this this what i prefer to call some sort of quest for knowledge and when you have quest for knowledge let me tell you the entire knowledge is useful for our exam it is a main motto of like you know explaining all this stuff observations right? social observations economic observations cultural observations and obviously once we done with all this stuff we'll be going to discuss modern indian history i need now to tell you modern history out of three components modern indian history one of the components which which is which is important for all competitive exams right from group 4 to upsc right? as far as modern history is concerned we are going to learn what is the classification of history like why history broadly divided into three components that is ancient medieval and modern and what is the significance of modern indian history the span of modern indian history from 18th century to mid 20th century so what is this span by whom this particular span was fixed the first chapter we'll going to discuss that is advent of the europeans right what were the european companies why did european companies come to india with what motives these companies landed on indian soil and these companies like you know got settled on on western coast and on eastern coast out of five european companies one european company called english eastern company emerged as supreme the english eastern company so what were the advantages of english eastern company what were the disadvantages of other european companies obviously obviously we will be going to discuss the differences between government organizations and private organizations out of five european companies that is portuguese eastern company followed by dutch eastern company followed by danish eastern company followed by french eastern company all these companies belonged to government organizations you call them public sector undertakings then how about english eastern company english eastern company happened to be private organization obviously we shall understand what are the differences between private organizations and government organizations see the main motto of understanding history reading historical like you know understanding historical events and applying these events to present day we have n number of n number of public sector undertakings the best example we have rtc please road road transport corporation and we have private rtcs right private buses government buses 
and we have we have like you know some knowledge the differences between private travels and government travels illu mellaga eltaru anamata 10 gantla hyderabad lo gustunte vijayawada 5 gantla ani cheptaru 7 gantla kinga surya pet lo pothuntaru mellaga pothu malli veellu 10 gantla hyderabad lo ekthe 5 gantla kante 4 naraku dimtaru anamata 7 undal ante 7 undu now first night dugan digan cheptaru so why like you know why we shall understand this because we are we are going to work with government in future obviously we are going to work with government as a bureaucrat if you were in that position what kind of what kind of measures to be taken to improve a government organization called rtc because government is paying to improve the things please not to support these people right so when you understand when you have already historical background what kind of defects with government organizations that is portuguese is a company dutch is a company danish is a company french is a company out of five european organizations one european organization called english is a company that to a private commercial petty commercial organization from england got victory obviously it has got like you no know, some sort of advantages so understanding historical events applying these events to present so having emerged as supreme english is a company the second chapter we are going to discuss british conquest out of five european companies one european company called english is a company emerged as supreme economically it's nothing but colonialism we'll be going to discuss if someone asks what does it mean by colonialism colonialism is nothing but economic domination if a country dominates another country economically we call this phenomenon as colonialism and history taught us colonialism always leads to imperialism try to understand colonialism always leads to imperialism so what does it mean by imperialism imperialism is nothing but nothing but political domination when you have economy when you have money obviously you tend to dominate others it's in human psychology please there is nothing like you no know, theories and all it's an it's an purely human psychology why the hell business magnates enter in politics to protect their wealth and to have some sort of money and to have some sort of power and obviously there is always relation between always relation between economy and power wealth and power i need to tell you relationship between colonialism and imperialism so when i say first chapter colonialism does it mean second chapter imperialism the answer is yes having emerged as supreme economically english is a company conquered 60% of indian subcontinent how by using various strategies by using various methods by using various diplomacy right one among them was that is battles obviously in the track called battles we'll be going to discuss battle of plassey battle of buxar some xyz battles by waging two battles bengal was conquered followed by wars we'll be going to discuss the fundamental differences between battles and wars in telugu we call it yuddhalu please plassey yuddhamu anglo maratha yuddhamu modati prapancha yuddhamu rendu prapancha yuddham but there is a difference in english that is battles and wars and the attack called wars we are going to learn anglo mysore wars when i say anglo mysore wars the wars fought between english east india company and mysore rulers that's it once we done with anglo mysore wars we'll be going to discuss anglo maratha wars the wars fought between english east india company and marathas especially peshwas right we have balaji vishwanath we have baji rao the first modern ranveer bhai right balaji baji rao madhav rao some xyz rao's we have not obviously ha huh? avar rao right so besides wars we have doctrine of labs doctrine of labs another strategy besides battles and wars we have doctrine of labs followed by subsidiary alliance my point is by waging by waging various battles wars by following various strategies english is a company a petty commercial organization from england occupied 60% of indian subcontinent what they prefer to call these territories as british india 
60 percent of Indian subcontinent. A private organization from England could capture what are the defects that will be discussed, right? The defects of Indian subcontinent, Indian rulers, Indian kingdoms. So having captured 60 percent of Indian subcontinent, obviously the third chapter we are going to discuss various policies, various policies introduced by English East India Company. And you, you also call them reforms introduced by English East India Company. Obviously, captured 60 percent of Indian subcontinent in order to administer these territories, English East India Company introduced various reforms, various policies. So, under the tackle policies, we are going to discuss various regulating acts. Regulating Act of 1773, 1784, 1813, 1833, 1858. So, all these acts gave an administrative structure to English Eastern Company. Once we are done with all these acts under the tag called administrative reforms, we will be going to discuss social reforms. What was an attitude of English Eastern Company towards Indian society, Indian social institutions, Indian social institutions which are associated with women. Right? Obviously, English Eastern Company enacted various acts. We will be going to discuss various acts that is Female Infanticide Abolition Act, Slavery Abolition Act, Sati Abolition Act, Caste Disabilities Removal Act, like you know, some XYZ acts that will be discussed in the attack called Social Reforms, followed by Economic Reforms, Land Tenure Systems we are going to discuss, Raitwari System, Zamindari System, Mahalwari System. What are the features of Raitwari system, Zamindari system, Mahalwari system? What were the advantages of Raitwari system? Obviously, the same strategies for Mahalwari and Zamindari. Followed by educational reforms or educational policies. Before going to get the modern education system, we are going to learn how education system under the tag called ancient India, that is Gurukul system, how the education under the tag called medieval India that is madrasa education. What forced English Eastern Company to introduce Western education? Chalo. So, as I was telling, so in the first chapter, various European companies have entered. In the second chapter, like you know, in the second chapter, by using various strategies, English Eastern Company captured 60 percent territories. And third chapter, various reforms, administrative reforms, social reforms, economic reforms, judicial reforms, obviously educational reforms. Like now the question is what was the what was the response of indians towards these reforms whatever reforms introduced by english eastern company response of indians that is revolts and movements the various sections of indian society they got fed up with these reforms reason being they were economically exploited in nature reason being they were associated with racial segregation, reason being they were associated with racial discrimination, reason being they were associated with inhuman like you know treatment of Indians. Outcome, Indians got fed up with English Eastern Company resulted they started expressing the dissatisfaction against English Eastern Company through violence and even through non-violence, revolts and movements. Tirugubatlu Mariu Udyamalu Antam Tilugu. In fact, we are, we, are, we are going to learn the fundamental differences between revolts and movements. So, when revolts come, when you are not happy with the system, when movement comes, same, when you are not happy with the system, then if it is the case, instead of using one term, why you are using two terms? Reason being, if you are not happy with the system, if you express your dissatisfaction based on violence, we call it revolt. Tirugu Bhattu Antam We will be going to discuss 1857 revolt. If you are not happy with the system, if you express your dissatisfaction against the system on the basis of non-violence, we call it movement. We use the term called Indian National Movement. We won't use the term called Indian National Revolt because Indian National Movement based on non-violence. We also use the term called Telangana Movement. Telangana movement. So, what does it mean movement? Movement is nothing but non-violence. Always associated with non-violence. 
बीट रिवोल्ट बीट मूवमेंट मेनी अदर टेक्निकल टर्म्स प्रोटेस्ट हड़ताल बंद रेवल्यूशन ऑल आर मेंट फॉर चेंज प्लेस दैट विल बी डिस्कस्ड सो इन अटैक ऑल रिवोल्ट एंड मूवमेंट्स वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक दैट इज दैट इज ट्राइबल रिवोल्ट वी आर गोइंग टू यूज द टर्म कॉल ट्राइबल रिवोल्ट बेस्ड ऑन बेस्ड ऑन वायलेंस ट्राइबल रिवोल्ट so innocent tribes express the dissatisfaction against zamindars express the dissatisfaction against money lenders express the dissatisfaction against revenue officers on the basis of violence we call it tribal revolt at least like you know a dozen revolts we are going to discuss under the tag called tribal revolts followed by peasant movements raitu udyamalu antam telugulo peasant movements and especially at least like you know one question we do get in general studies mains from peasant movements the differences between 19th century peasan movements and 20th century peasan movements and the tag called 19th century peasan movements we are going to learn that is indigo revolt and then the peasan movements and jp called indigo revolt that will be discussed why why indigo peasan movement otherwise called as revolt followed by champaran kheda badoli different like you no know, peasant movements like you no know, mopla peasant revolt followed by 1857 revolt and obviously we are going to spend lot of time on 1857 revolt important for all competitive exams prelims point of view mains point of view and even interview point of view so we are going to learn causes for the outbreak of 1857 revolt a bunch of factors responsible how 1857 revolt went on like you know what kind of stakeholders participated in 1857 revolt right from kangana ranaut to uh, kangana am uh, perem perunta the character lakshmi bai ah sir jhansi lakshmi bai ah right modern ah uh, ranaut right modern ranaut jhansi lakshmi bai followed by bahadur shah the second like you know tantiya tope nana saheb some xyz personalities we are going to discuss and what was the outcome of 1857 revolt that will also be discussed and we have we have various opinions and that will be discussed in the tag called nature there was a one gentleman by name vidi savarkar who prefers to call 1857 revolt as first national war of independence ela pedda dialogue ottadu enduku aa dialogue enduku mal danni various scholars e vidhanga danni danni vitrekincharu that will be discussed so revolts and movements and you can ask the question when various sections of indian society expressed their dissatisfaction against english east india company beat tribals beat peasants beat like you know civilians beat officer like you know, military officers you call them sepoys and all what is the response of english east india company very simple revolts and movements were brutally it's all about revolts and movements followed by we have we have socio religious reformation movements under the tag called socio religious reformation movements we are going to discuss hindu reformation movements followed by islamic reformation movements followed by parsi reformation movements and even sikh reformation movements so when i say hindu reformation movements under the tag called hindu reformation movements we have many organizations brahma samaj raja ramohan roy what kind of what kind of contributions made by brahma samaj to indian society especially hindu society and hindu religion followed by we have arya samaj swami dayananda saraswati same strategies we are going to follow right? and what is the difference between brahma samaj and arya samaj so now the previous questions of general studies mains that will be discussed followed by rama krishna movement swami dayananda i'm sorry swami vivekananda rama krishna movement and the tag called rama krishna movement will be going to discuss two organizations rama krishna math rama krishna mission we'll be going to learn the differences between rama krishna math and rama krishna mission and what kind of contributions made by swami vivekananda to indian culture followed by theosophical society especially under the guidance of mrs annie b sent what kind of contributions made by annie b sent to especially indian education system she was responsible for 
sitting above many educational institutions. We have BT College at Arayar, BT College at Madanpalli, like you know, Hindu College at Benares, or a period of time it is it is called as Benares Hindu University Endowment. The credit goes to Theosophical Society. Once we are done with Hindu Reformation movements, we have Islamic Reformation movements. Another track called Islamic Reformation movements, we will be going to discuss Aligarh movement, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. We are going to learn one important event when we compared with Hindu Reformation movements and Islamic Reformation movements. Hindu Reformation movements were like you know a little bit earlier compared with Islamic Reformation movements. We are going to learn why Islamic Reformation movements were late. We have a bunch of factors. Islamic Reformation movement, Aligarh movement, followed by Dioband movement, followed by Tablig, Izamat movement, followed by Wahhabi movement, different movements we have. Right? So why, why we were using the term called movements? Movements are meant for change, as simple as it is. The moment you use the term called movement, you are not happy with the system, thereby you are expressing dissatisfaction. If you express your dissatisfaction on the basis of violence, that will be branded as revolt. If on the basis of non-violence, that will be branded as movement. When I say Hindu reformation movements, in Hindu society, society was not good. Religion was also not good. When I say not good, we have like you know, various evil practices, unfortunately. So these evil practices were plucked out by the respective broad-minded scholars. And obviously, Brahmin scholars. Raja Ramon Rai, by, by faith he was a Brahmin. By faith he was a Hindu and by caste he was a Brahmin. Broad-minded Brahmins we call them. Followed by Parsi reformation movements. So who are Parsis? In which circumstances they hailed from Iran to, Iran to India and they got settled on western coast. And what forced Parsis to organize movements and all that will be discussed. Followed by Sikh reformation movements. So obviously we are going to learn Bhakti movement as part of Bhakti movement, Guru Nanak and his disciples. In Sikhism we have 10 Gurus and what were the principles of Sikhism? What are the important events which are associated with Sikh religion? And what forced 19th century Sikh intellectuals to organize movements and all? And the tag called Sikh reformation movements, we are going to discuss Nirankari movement. What does it mean by Nirankar? What does it mean by Akar? What does it mean by Akar? Akara Montam Telulu. Akar. Shape. Fantastic. Shape. Nirankar. Shapeless. Form. Formless. We have two types of people that is, that is Niguna Bhakti and Saguna Bhakti. Niguna is a Sanskrit term. Niguna sect, Saguna sect. Niguna sect is the one which worships God in abstract form. When I say abstract form, no form at all. The best example, Muslims. Muslims do worship God without shape, without form. So, Niguna sect we call it. Then how about Saguna sect? Saguna sect worships God by giving human form and even by giving gender form. Human form, God you call it. Gender form, Goddess, as simple as it is. So, Nirankar, Nirankar, like you know, this particular movement propagated, you shall worship God without form. Nirankari movement, we call it. Followed by Akali movement. Akali movement, Gadu. Bu Akali, I can understand it. So, Akali movement. The significance of Akali movement, the main motto of Akali movement, removal of Mahajans or Mahantas, you also call them Mahantas. Who are Mahantas? What are Brahmins for Hindu religion? Mahantas for Sikh religion. They were religious custodians. What are Ulemas for Islam kind of? Right? So when Mahantas became so greedy for power, so greedy for like you know wealth, Mahantas inserted unfortunately many, many like you know selfish practices among the Sikhs. It was not digested by the Western educated Sikhs outcome. They organized movement against Mahantas. That is what we call Akali movement. So these are the movements that will be discussed in the tag called socio-religious reformation movements. And finally, national movement. So another 
extremely important component national movement 1885 to 1947 i'm talking about the span of national movement so another tag called national movement not audible is it for everyone only for srinath prasad navin kumar is it for everyone i mean jeppa kada maaki vinipistundani ha yes someone says like you know it's now clear it's audible right so as far as national movement is concerned we are going to learn very basic concepts what does it mean by nation what does it mean by state the differences between nation and state what does it mean by nationalism what does it mean by freedom movement what does it mean by national movement what are the differences between freedom movements and national movements with this background we are going to learn formation of indian national congress besides indian national congress we have like you know many organizations and how these organizations differ with that of indian national congress and whatever whatever movements organized by indian national congress broadly divided into three categories that is moderate phase of 1885 to 1905 extremist phase of 1905 to 1920 and gandhian phase of 1920 1947 in simple national movement the movements organized by indian national congress so under the tag called moderate phase we are going to learn what was the goal of indian national congress between 1885 to 1905 what kind of methods what kind of what kind of like you know methodologies used by indian national congress what kind of programs organized by indian national congress between 1885 to 1905 their outcomes will be going to discuss when it comes to extremist phase and the tag called extremist phase we are going to discuss that is vande mataram movement of 1906 1908 what were the reasons for vande mataram movement what were the programs of vande mataram movement in which session of indian national congress indian national congress decided to organize vande mataram movement what was the, what were the like you know consequences of vande mataram movement that will be discussed followed by home rule movement otherwise called as self rule movement vande matra movement of 1906 1908 when it comes to home rule movement of 1916 1918 so when we understand home rule movement we are going to discuss obviously the background of first world war phase so now the previous questions of general studies mains how first world war forced indian national congress to organize a movement the question was not related to home rule movement but related to home rule movement the question is very very simple um, but a little, little bit logic based how first world war forced indian national congress to organize a movement right in question we never found the name called home rule movement but we supposed to write regarding home rule movement right? so the point is you shall have the background of a movement please right? first world war 1914 1918 when it comes to home rule movement 1916 1918 we'll be going to discuss one of the reasons for organizing home rule movement by indian national congress especially under the guidance of mrs annie b sent who entered indian politics in indian national congress and bala gangadhar tilak obviously first world war and the background of first world war same same strategies whatever strategies which we followed for one day matra movement same strategies we are going to learn for home rule movement like you no know, reasons for home rule movement course of home rule movement like you know how it went on and what were the consequences and finally gandhian phase the third and last phase of indian national movement gandhian phase under the tag called gandhian phase we are going to learn three mass and massive movements non cooperation movement of 1920 22 civil disobedience movement of 1930 34 and quitinia movement of 1942 in sir years ekko cheptunu unimportant flow lo ostundi kabadi cheptunu years are not at all important just to have an idea please mir andaru salla undali don't look at history with with a with a like you know with a content called telephone dictionary please history is not telephone dictionary what do you get in telephone dictionary names and numbers please some pullaiya 9848022336 kind of no history is not like you know telephone dictionary mal enduku rasthunnaru sir oka idea undadaniki 
సే ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఫస్ట్ వరల్డ్ వార్ ఇది నాకు క్వశ్చన్ చెప్పాను ఫస్ట్ వరల్డ్ వార్ ఆ గెలవకోతే మొత్తం ఆగమాగం అవుతుంది ఒక ఐడియా ఉండడానికి యూ నీడ్ నాట్ టు ఎంఫసైజ్ ఓవర్ ఇయర్స్ అండ్ ఆల్ థింగ్స్ జస్ట్ టు హ్యావ్ అన్ ఐడియా కైండ్ ఆఫ్ సో ఆబ్వియస్లీ నాన్ కోఆపరేషన్ మూమెంట్ ఆఫ్ నైన్టీన్ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ టూ కాజస్ ఇన్ఫ్యాక్ట్ వాట్ ఎవర్ వాట్ ఎవర్ మూమెంట్స్ యూ యూ స్టడీ బ్యాటిల్స్ యూ స్టడీ వార్స్ యూ స్టడీ త్రీ సీస్ టు బి కాన్సన్ట్రేటెడ్ ఫస్ట్ సి కాజస్ సెకండ్ సి కోర్స్ థర్డ్ సి కాన్సిక్వెన్స్ అంటే ఒక ఒక మూమెంట్ని ఒక ఆర్గనైజ్డ్ వేలో చదవాలన్నమాట ఒక వార్ని ఆర్గనైజ్డ్ వేలో చదవాలి ఫర్ అవర్ కన్వీనియన్స్ ప్లేస్ వీఆర్ నాట్ హియర్ టు లర్న్ దీస్ మెనీ పీపుల్ గాట్ కిల్డ్ రక్తం ఏర్ లైఫ్ ఇవన్నీ వద్దనమాట ఏర్ లైతేంది సముద్రాలు అయితేంది హౌ దీస్ బ్యాటిల్ హెల్ప్స్ మీ ఇన్ కాంపిటేటివ్ ఎగ్జామ్స్ హౌ దీస్ పర్టికులర్ ఎపిసోడ్ హెల్ప్స్ మీ ఇన్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ దిస్ బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ రైట్ సో దీస్ ఆర్ దిస్ దిస్ దీస్ ఆర్ ది ఆర్ టార్గెట్స్ నాట్ లుకింగ్ అండ్ లర్నింగ్ ట్రెడిషనల్ స్టఫ్ అండ్ ఆల్ రైట్ సో నాన్ కోఆపరేషన్ మూమెంట్ సివిల్ డిజోబీడియన్స్ మూమెంట్ అండ్ క్విట్ ఇండియా మూమెంట్ అండ్ విత్ దీస్ లైక్ యూ నో నాట్ నాట్ కంప్లీటెడ్ బికాస్ క్విట్ ఇండియా మూమెంట్ కేమ్ టు ఎండ్ బై నైన్టీన్ ఫార్టీ టూ but we got independence in the year 1947 so the events that will be discussed under the tag called freedom and partition events between 1942 to 1947 freedom and partition so one political party says we must be given independence that is indian national congress another political party says that is muslim league party that will be discussed we must be given first partition first first divide british india into two halves assume this is like you know british india and this is princely states assume the circle indian subcontinent british india the india which was conquered by english eastern company that is 60% territories the remaining 40% territories we have princely states telugu lo mudduga swadeshi samsthanalu untundi when india was given independence there were 563 princely states so british india to be divided into two halves the main motto of muslim league party in simple partition of british india so freedom and partition one political party says that is indian national congress first give us freedom when it comes to partition that is our cup of tea that is our internal problem we look after me dannam matter first ethi mere ellanu cheppanu other political party says that is muslim league party edi votar first judu choose elponu ani cheppanu first divide british india into two halves ik dannam pedtan meer vote vil mamul batkane undu first like you know divide british india now this responsibility this task was given to lord mount batten that will be discussed mount batten plan otherwise called as freedom and partition scheme it was a gentleman who was responsible for division of british india obviously with so many like you no know, pressures that will be discussed right we have raja ji's plan deshai liaquat's plan cabinet mission plan wevel plan different plans we have different schemes we have right and finally lord mount batten's plan and it was a gentleman divided divided british india into two halves that is on 14th august 1947 Pakistan was given independence on 15th August 1947 India was given independence keeping us at this stuff then how about this one right princely states princely states were given three options that is that is a princely state can remain independent a princely state can join in Pakistan a princely state can join in India So obviously out of 563 princely states the maximum princely states decided to remain themselves as independent once again human psychology no one wants to like you know give their own authority their own power their own resources their own wealth to some ex kingdom i'm sorry some ex country and some y country so it became a kind of great hurdle a kind of great like you know problem for indian union the entire task was given to sardar sardar vallabh bhai patel so patel says patel made it clear that nehru ji aap chinta mat karo hum hai na prelims mein aapko 
హెల్ప్ కర్నేకి లే మెయిన్స్ మే ఆప్కు హెల్ప్ కర్నేకి లే ఆప్ చింతా మత్ కొరేన్ జెప్పి ఏదో ఓడ్ జై పల్ల పల్ల వీకల నీస్కోన్ రాన్ జెప్పి సో ఇట్ వాస్ ఈ జెంట్రిమెంట్ సర్ధార్ పటేల్ వాజ్ రెస్పాన్సిబుల్ ఫర్ ఇంటిగ్రేషన్ ఆఫ్ ప్రిన్స్లీ స్టేట్స్ ఇన్ టు ఇండియన్ యూనియన్ అండ్ నౌ వి వర్ మేకింగ్ లైక్ నో కార్టన్ బిజినెస్ సమ్ ఎక్స్ సేస్ ఇంటిగ్రేషన్ సమ్ వై సేస్ లిబరేషన్ సమ్ అదర్ సేస్ ఎవడు వ్యాపారం ఆడదు అనమాట నో దిస్ ఈస్ ఆ వి నీడ్ టు అండర్స్టాండ్ ప్లీజ్ అండ్ ఆబ్వియస్లీ వి ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు స్పెండ్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ టైమ్ సో వాట్ డస్ అన్ మీన్ బై ఇంటిగ్రేషన్ వాట్ డస్ అన్ మీన్ బై లిబరేషన్ వి యూస్ అ టర్మ్ కాల్డ్ ఆపరేషన్ విజయ్ లిబరేషన్ ఆఫ్ గోవా that will be discussed 1961 operation vijay liberation of goa and obviously integration of princely states into indian union especially hyderabad operation polo otherwise called as operation godart plan otherwise called as operation caterpillar like different technical terms we have right it's all about history please so any queries if you love to ask including online students don't ask which battle fought when right please world history definitely world history we are going to discuss please right from right from that is like you know industrial revolution in fact american revolution before american revolution we have industrial revolution right from industrial revolution to obviously formation of un more please right? so as far as world history is concerned concern, it's a good question one of our friends he says then how about world history what kind of like you know topics to be uh, dealt in world history right from american revolution to u n o american revolution otherwise called as american war of independence how india was ruled by england america 13 colonies are were also ruled by england between 1776 1783 13 colonies gave stiff resistance to England resulted 13 colonies got liberated from America I'm sorry England we call it American Revolution otherwise called as American war of independence independence for I'm sorry war for independence 13 colonies or a period of time it went on and today we call it United States of America which consists of how many states 50 states right American Revolution obviously how american revolution the concept the event helps us in competitive exams that is important based we are not here to study american revolution how american revolution created an impact on indian history that is important that is important for competitive exams once we are done with american revolution we will be going to discuss industrial revolution american revolution related to politics industrial revolution related to economy it was in it was in mid 18th century england experienced tremendous developments in terms of production please large scale productions take place so these productions large scale productions which took place in england's economy scholars branded these developments as revolution we'll be going to discuss the differences between evolution and revolution industrial revolution obviously how industrial revolution created impact on indian economy followed by french revolution american revolution related to politics or political sector industrial revolution related to economic sector when it comes to french revolution of 1789 related to social sector the people of france organized revolution against government social revolution so why we call it social revolution because there was huge huge social disparities please as i was telling european societies got classified on the basis of class rich and poor so the middle class people with the support of like you know the downtrodden sections of french society organized revolts against rulers french revolution we call once we done with french revolution and one of the important concepts that is napoleon bonaparte obviously how his policies created impact on indian history this is important napoleon bonaparte the man who conquered entire europe except england why didn't he conquer england that will be that will be discussed followed by unification of italy followed by unification of germany as part of unification of italy we are going to discuss three personalities count cavour 
పేర్లు కొంచెం కడుపులో దిప్తాయి ఎందుకంటే మన పేర్లు కాదు మన పేర్లు మనం గుర్తుండడానికి చాలా తంటలు పడుతుంది కౌంట్ కవూర్ జోసెఫ్ మాజీని జోసెఫ్ గారీ బాల్టి దిస్ త్రీ పర్సనాలిటీస్ వెన్ ఇట్ కమ్స్ టు యూనిఫికేషన్ ఆఫ్ జర్మనీ అట్ అవన్ బిస్మార్ and how unification of italy and unification of germany created impact on first world war that will be discussed first world war and the consequences of first world war first world war first world war fought between triple alliance and triple entity when i say triple alliance three countries triple alliance that is that is germany austria and italy right when it comes to triple entity we have england France, USA and even Japan. And then it's a triple entity and JP Nalu Rasto. Mela Mela Gandhar Jaya Nirmut. Triple Alliance versus Triple Entity. 1914-1918. Obviously, we must remember few years. The First World War, the span of First World War, 1914-1918. What was the outcome of First World War? Very simple. Triple Alliance was badly beaten by Triple Entity. What was the outcome? That will be discussed. Between 1919 to 1939, the two decades in Europe, various developments took place. 1919, the year in which First World War came to an end, Treaty of Versailles. 1939, the year in which one more war commenced. That is Second World War. So for about two decades, Europe underwent like you know so many changes under the tag called 1919-1939 we're going to discuss three important events one among them was rise of fascism benito mussolini italy rise of nazism adolf hitler germany nazi party and all right and rise of militarism in japan military dictators in japan when i say when i say fascism when i say fascism that is italy when i say nazism that is germany when i say militarism that is japan and these three countries were responsible for second world war we call them axis powers the span of second world war 1939-1945 how first world war fought between triple alliance and triple entity second world war fought between axis versus allied allied same england france usa and ussr england france united states of america ussr then how about axis italy benito mussolini germany adolf hitler japan japan military dictators a peer palakrante koncham kadupula dipthad anamata thikka thikka gunte peer avasaram ledhu we must learn we must make efforts to remember indian history names because important for prelims exam world history important for so understanding events understanding concepts writing down in our own language which is which is essential for general studies mains so what was the outcome of second world war 1939 1945 very simple axis parts shattered to pieces and we found a big brother according to united states of america that is united nations organization big brother for whom big brother for big countries not for small country big brother for big economies not for third world countries not for devastated countries and it is not to exaggerate to say after second world war the entire world divided into two halves what do we call what do we call cold war otherwise called as bipolar world one polar headed by democratic country called united states of america another polar headed by communist country called ussr bipolar world we call it kind of cold war we call it the span of cold war 1945 to 1991 1945 the year in which second world war came to an end when america dropped two atom bombs one on hiroshima august 6th another one on nagasaki august 9th strictly speaking by 1943 second world war came to an end 
1943 December and all based. Just because one country that is Japan, which is so adamant, the credit goes to the credit goes to military dictators. It was Japan which carried war until one and half years based. Single country from Asia, one and a half years based. On one hand, United States of America, England, France, USSR gave many ultimatums. Ijjadga class complete jai eldam akles nan yeperam. Vintega win level. Outcome akkado bam ikkado bam no kero. Resulted, resulted 12th 12th August 1945. Sign ekar sign jail sara ikkar jail jepe. Ite manchari jepte yodi naran mat. Palla palla vikte apur malla gusunro. It's in human psychology. That's what history taught us. Right? Keeping aside the year in which Second World War came to an end, that is 1945, and what is this 1991, the year in which USSR got disintegrated, that is like, you know, fall of USSR, we call it. And we are also going to discuss NAM, that is India and China. So let us not join either USA bloc, that is democratic bloc, nor we join communist bloc. Let us create our own bloc, right? It was an, it was an like, you know, it's an idea of Jawaharlal Nehru, Panchashil and Nam that will be discussed under the tag called Third World Countries. So it's all about any queries. If not, we'll end the session. Any queries? Apart from old history, please. Any queries regarding ancient, medieval and modern? So as far as, as far as, what you supposed to do, you supposed to do three elements. Right? One is syllabus, obviously, followed by previous year question papers, followed by reference books. These three cardinal points one shall follow for all subjects. How long? Until we get service. Please. Tarvata means First one, reading and attending the classes. The first cardinal point. Say for example, once you will be given schedule, say history class, right? Some topic, maybe prehistoric pre cultures. Take NCRT, just have the glands placed. So what is this prehistoric cultures? What does it mean by prehistory? What does it mean by Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic? Some XYZ terminologies. Obviously, first reading lo koncham tum aga maga mai thodan mati. Yendi di manu ekaru na koncham matla nai thodan. So mellaga. A background to class attend gawal. So you get some X, Y, Z points here. You will get some conceptual clarity. And after that, you shall go to your rooms or dormitories. You shall read the same topic and you shall make your own notes. First reading, second listening, understanding and writing. Third one, once again, reading. Ila jeste, subject gada gada, Allah mamma gudo sir. I am in the place sir. Oddu, I am oddu. Idi maathar nechu. Oka roj jadvi, Vandha roj il rest, Ivaddan maathar. Oka ganta jadvi, Chala chadvi amani feel hai, Rest to this koni, Alasi poi, Malli rest to this koni, Malli alas poi, Malli rest, Ivan na, Ivan ni panja. It must be, Perennial practice. Ila gaitene competitive field lo manam unta manmat. Lake pote competitive field untun. Samas darko ishara kafi. First reading, in class, listening, understanding, and writing. Very tough practice, let me tell you. Listening, understanding, and writing in our own language. And after going, once again reading that. Ila jeste chai dagadan gula time under the matter. Because, like you know, you may, be at, you may be attending classes for three to four classes. You must follow these, these three components for each and every subject. History sar jepinadu, history ke follow ta, I inquire in jep, you are reading for like you know, all this stuff for general studies. Please. Each and every component is important. Please. Then, history okka is out on a ticker kochi part al So, any, any other queries? If, if not, we'll. We'll end the session, please. Shall we? Right. Thanks for your cooperation.
will meet uh, will meet in the class please thank you